I royally messed up when first building this studio. And the amount of time I've spent trying to fix it since then, I, I try not to think about it too much. It's just some of the things you learn when you build your first studio, or I guess when you watch videos on people who built their first studio, so you don't make the mistakes. I think the last video of Senpai HQ, we ended it throwing a sledgehammer through the wall. That's how much this place needed to change. Hey, by the way, if you missed the announcement, we launched merch last week with a brand new website. It's beautiful. We got the Notice Me Senpai design on both t-shirts and hoodies. We got the Senpai Windbreaker, and we got the classic idiot and genius beanies. Buy an idiot beanie for someone else and tell them it's a genius beanie. That's 99 percentile <laughs> thinking right there. And more designs coming in the next couple of weeks. And fun fact, by the way, if you join a membership to this channel, you'll be given a coupon code that'll give you $5 off any item you buy. So like, if you're planning on buying two items, if you pay a $5 membership, you'll get $10 off the, the order. <laughs> Seems like a bad business move. Came to me in a dream, and who am I to say no to my dreams? So yeah, check that out, uh, link down below. But yeah, the original studio here had, when we first built it, had, had two main goals. First goal, and this was the big one. I wanted it to look like a real professional studio. I, I just come from my basement in our last apartment when we started building this place. It was very like RGB gamer, E with big old LEDs on the walls. This place was gonna be professional, darn it. I ended up overshooting, by the way. This place just looked, it looked bland. It looked like sterile. Like so many white walls. Second goal, I had like five employees when we first started building this space. I, I made the classic mistake of like, we're growing, so I should hire people. I was a YouTuber. I was not a businessman. I was definitely not a boss and I learned a very expensive lesson. So I had this space set aside for my editor and I had this space set aside for meetings and I, I ended up finding myself like 99% of the time in here alone with a ton of unusable space. So, made some dramatic decisions. Yeah, the first time you were here was the day I threw the sledgehammer through the, through the wall here. Oh. And so we're now completely reworking this space in kind of a two phase system. We've been working on phase one for the past year, 2024 is the start of phase two, and I am pumped for phase two. I'll start with this room, start with my room. This was the room, that was two smaller rooms less than a year ago. And I, I just, general rule, by the way, that one big room, way better than two small rooms. My office, which was this half of this room, was so unenjoyable to be in that I would come in, I would stream, and sometimes game in here, and then if I wasn't doing one of those two things, I didn't set foot in this space. It is now, my favorite place to be of all time. Maybe except my bed. No, bed comes second. The couch, the giant 75 inch TV, that's the perfect viewing height. I just marathoned Vinland Saga on this thing in the last month, no regrets. It's also big enough to have two gigantic desks in here, which are both butcher block because I've grown an obsession with butcher block. The L mounted desk that's mounted to the wall over there is my gaming and streaming desk with my gigantic liquid cooled gaming PC and my gaming monitors and my guitar rig and my giant, all, all the big boy equipment is on that desk. This is the audio hub, basically that, that controls the audio of everything at this desk. This is the Mackie DLZ creator. We've been working with Mackie a lot lately, the audio company, ever since I fell in love with their DLZ creator. I just swapped out my 12 year old Yamaha speakers with these <laughs> Big old giganto eight inch Mackie monitors, the HR824 Mark IIs. I've got them turned down so low just to make them manageable. I think they're only outputting like 5% of what they're capable of outputting because like, I don't need to blast anything in here. I'm not mixing music. These things are just insane. Here's the Mackie. And here's the Yamaha. I don't know if you've ever gamed on studio monitors, but it is an experience. It, you gotta, if you can, <laughs> try, come here. Come, come into my space and game one game at my setup. You gotta do it. The 75 inch right here used to be out in the other room and it was never used out. I had the 55 inch here mounted up here 
And I said, that's stupid. There was a lot of Zelda on that TV. That's where I played the entire game. And then I have my work desk here, just kind of in the middle of the room on wheels. And I went full minimalism on this thing. Not Nothing except the stuff that I need. And I love this desk. I ended up having to build half the desk. Throughout the process, I think this desk had like three or four different orientations. And I've landed on here for now, but it will probably move again. I think I need to do a desk tour of of this desk. Let's do it of let's do one of both. I'm going to do a desk tour of my gaming desk and go over all of the equipment that I use and that'll go on on this channel. Probably I don't know, maybe I'll just shoot this one next. And then I think I'll do like my own personal desk setup on the new tech channel that we started that I haven't told you about. And already 400 subscribers almost. And already 400 subscribers on a channel with one video that's never been announced. I'm okay with that. That's a good start. I will let you know what that channel is and I'll link to it when that video's done in the next month or two. Some of you found it, but I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna keep it a secret from the rest of you for a little bit. Yeah, I got two of the Amaran color lights hanging from the ceiling, pointing at each wall, so that way whichever way the camera's facing, we can get some color, color on the set, whatever we need. But this room still isn't done. I'm still working on some really big updates and I'm really excited for. Here's actually some renders of the big light fixture that I'm working on right now. Next year, 2024 office tour, have some, uh, some real updates for you. Uh, let's move out this door to the main space. This was a very poorly used space last time we did the studio tour and it is much better used now. I gutted everything in this space. We had so many desks that were never used. I replaced all of the light fixtures myself. Ended up building Dustin what I believe to be a godlike editing desk. Don't touch my big knob. Don't touch, this is, I won't touch the big knob. I don't know if uh, a lot of you know this, Dustin went part-time about six, I don't know, six months ago? Yep. Yeah. Did. Unfortunate circumstances. But anyway, we both, he went part time. And so I've been slowly trying to bribe him. On a scale of one to 10, how would you rate my bribery? It's probably like an 8.5. An 8.5? Yeah. The Corsair Platform 6 desk is insane. Like, if you're looking for the best desk, it's that and it's not close. We ended up adding both of the extenders to each side. This thing turns into an eight foot, just monstrosity of a desk. Are you happy with the mega desk decision? The mega desk is the way to go. <laughs> I just like having so much empty space. Motorized sitting and standing, super expandable with like a railing system and a bunch of pegboards, and then added a couple little things to it to make the life of an editor a little bit easier. He had little like three inch speakers that I got on Amazon before this. And then while he was out, I, I upgraded to the, the Mackie six inch monitors. And so he came back into the studio the next day and it just like to sit down at what probably felt like just complete overcompensation. He's starting to take care of his editor. We'll see if I go full time <laughs> He's again. starting to take care of his editor? <laughs> that might be the world's greatest audio setup for an editor ever. So again, thank you, Mackie, for sponsoring this video and <laughs> sending those. <laughs> it feels almost ridiculous, but they're so good. <laughs> and then the last thing on the desk is those monitors are being controlled by the Mackie Big Nog. Big Nog? We got the Mackie Big Nog that a uh, Big Nog. Big Knob. Why is that so hard to say? Big Knob, Big Knob, Big Knob, Big Knob. Oh. So we got we to gotta fix it up with some nice aesthetics now that we got the functionality set up. But this is uh, editing desk number two. Used it in the Obsbot video. We did, yeah, we, we used this desk in the Obsbot video for all the B-roll stuff and it turned out great. The desk next to his desk is mostly a set desk. Like we shoot a lot of product shots there, but it's also super functional if we ever need another desk. It's got a Mac mini with a killer zoom call set up just already built into it. And so if we ever have like a second editor coming by, maybe a, a guest editor on a big project, like they can set up right there. I'm gonna say something that's gonna sound really first world problems. I hate this table. I hate this table so much. It is ungodly heavy and and so impractical. <laughs> like the desks are, the legs are separate from it. Maybe that table's just heavy because you're out of shape. Oh. We're in the middle of a massive project right now. I'm building a giant acoustic light fixture for my studio in that room. And so all of this underneath it is either boxes for monitors or stuff for building that, or like you can see the LED strips on top. But this desk is especially for like holding onto gear that we're shooting videos of soon. I don't we don't even need to, it's probably not interesting. We're probably gonna cut all that out. Are you gonna cut all that out? Maybe. All right. The last desk in the space is mostly just for powering those three TVs that I've yet to use 
in a set, but we'll we'll, we'll do it. That's, that's phase two, but it's also multifunctional. They all gotta serve multiple purposes if I'm gonna clean this place up. So it's also a gaming desk. I've got Orthrus chilling there under the desk. If you don't remember, that's my two-in-one PC setup with two actual full-on PCs inside one chassis, hence the name Orthrus, which I definitely didn't have to Google. It kept, took it off the top of my head. And so whenever Dustin and I need a little gaming break in the middle of the day, it's ready to go. Also, if you didn't notice, which would be ridiculous, it's also powered by those gigantic Mackie speakers. So again, if a second editor comes in and needs to work with professional audio, well, got that desk for them. Um, this is a kitchenette, and by kitchenette, I mean it's a table with a microwave and paper towels and water bottles. Where's the mini fridge? What do you want first? Do you want a better entertainment system or do you want a mini fridge? Mini fridge. Mini fridge. Because then like I can actually bring a lunch and put it in there and eat it later. Well, if you worked in here, maybe I'd get you a fridge right. to work in here. I've right. worked, I spent all the right, entire right. time on your desk. I'm just trying you, to like see you, how far I can what get do you have to go. Say now that yourself. he's given me this, like, come on, <laughs> see where's the mini fridge? Dude, this is what I work with. This is how good of an editor you know someone is when I'll put up with this <laughs> bleep that out. <laughs> We managed to take what we did with like six desks in the original setup and do it with like three desks in this setup. We didn't really go over this in the last studio tour very much. The the gear space, we got a microphone shelf that's become so packed that they can't, they're just starting to pile on each other. Um, as well as the interface, I feel like audio, <laughs> I have so much audio stuff. And if I can get real nerdy with you guys, just get real, just get real deep in this, every one of these desks is hooked up with 10 gigabit ethernet connected to a central NAS, or basically a, an 80 terabyte hard drive in my server room, in my storage room. That's hopefully a video coming soon. We're, we're completely switching out the way our NAS works, but to editing off the NAS with 10 gig connection from anywhere in the space, is is huge if we want to start collaborating on products and like on projects and, and editing together on things, which is what I want to do on future channels that we're working on. Full transparency, I don't do a lot of editing these days, but uh, Dustin and I have plans to start like two or three more channels this year. So there's a part of me that's got the itch, the you know, to tinker with some projects. Probably just make Dustin's life harder. So this is a secret light switch, by the way, uh, going into the recording studio. Uh, since the last video, we had to make a rule where if Ryan is in there working, because I can't tell he's in there working, that's a giant concrete box underneath my garage. And so if Ryan's in there working, I have no idea. And one day I was over there in this room working at like one in the morning and I thought I was alone in my home. I don't even think I was, I don't think I was wearing pants. And then like Ryan walks out of here at 1 a.m. He'd been streaming in the studio and I had no idea. I was like, oh, I didn't want that to happen again. It could have been a lot worse. When Ryan's in there, the light is on. When he's not in there, the light is off. I mean, might as well just take a look. Might as well. For those of you that missed the last tour. Since the last tour, we've shot a bunch of stuff in here. Um, I think we had just finished building the space when we shot the last tour, but you know, we had Tuanto come in here. We had Foosley come in here. We've shot a bunch of music videos and recorded a bunch of stuff in here. Just You can hear the difference. I wonder if you can hear it in the lab, the difference. You probably can just how quiet this room is. This space is so cool. You see, you did it to yourself though by bribery, cause it's like, look at Ryan's space compared to like your editor's space. Oh, so that's why you don't come in cause you feel neglected compared to Ryan's that, space? That's why I went part-time. Mm. You know? But the last kind of made over area in this space is probably the unboxing area. And this was a thing where like a couple minor changes completely changed the space. This space used to be my main A-roll space where I shot everything because this room was just super cramped. It was the only place in this whole space I could film. And I have actually gone back there and shot some videos over there recently. Like I love that this space has become so versatile that I can now shoot almost anywhere. We shot the Senpai merch around in here too. Yeah, we shot our, we did the, the merch. We didn't get any footage of that. No. Should have gotten footage of that. We got a few, no, nah, yeah. We we're learning, we're, we're learning with each drop. We need to get, we need to get better at uh -huh. doing that. Would you guys even be interested in seeing like BTS stuff? Like, you know, because we could do it. We just need to think harder about doing it, so. Yeah, I'm so focused on the ITS in front of the scenes. Mm, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new one. But that area has turned into a well-oiled unboxing machine. And mostly, the big thing is due this. We got Butcher Block number three. 
as well as my Invisalign that I took out to, to film this. Don't close up on that. Why is Butcher Block so beautiful? It's perfect anywhere. You can't go wrong with Butcher Block. Just comparing unboxings side by side, like it brought so much warmth and so much life to those top down shots. I also added extra sound treatment to the TV wall because that area was just a giant rectangular box. You're probably still hearing that it's it's pretty bouncy. But that whole space is just so much more usable now. What about that other room? Oh, you don't wanna, that's not a- that's, That was supposed to be my space. That was going to be the editing room. That was a dungeon though. It was. They, nobody wanted to work in there, and so it's become like a little home gym. What if the Senpai Gaming Channel became the Senpai Fitness Channel, mm. and we just started working out for like three hours a day? Mm. Channel shift. This, this let, is, us, let us know. We found our new direction. We found our new prerogative. Mm -hmm. no, more, no more tech. Or just call it Senpai Gaming Fitness. This is a 99th percentile. Yeah, thinking. Play, yeah, yeah, for sure. Which is a perfect segue into the transfer from phase one to phase two. It was so frustrating to finally finish this space and be so proud of it and then realize that 90% of it was just unusable space. Entirely due to my own fault. I've spent this entire last year trying to fix the lack of functionality in this studio. Make this room larger, add more places that I can shoot or build a good space for Dustin to be able to edit and shoot B-roll. The goal is to make this the envy of all the land of YouTube. I think this space is gonna look completely different by the end of 2024. And I wanna have some really cool comparison before and after. But it's getting to a good usable place. And that was the core of phase one for the past year. Phase two starts in 2024 when I get back from my holiday, which I'm leaving for and like six hours, so wish me luck. But phase two is giving this space life. Fixing the sterileness of this space. I'm spending 2024 making this space a place that's fun to be in, a place that's fun to work in, a place that's fun to shoot in. Where's the sledgehammer? Sledgehammer? Yeah. Are you gonna break something for phase two? <sighs> what can we break? What if we broke this? The, the real marble? Yeah, just, I mean, I need to throw this out anyway, <laughs> just... This is like... So if you want to join along for this gigantic undertaking of finally building the perfect YouTube studio, hit the subscribe button down below. I'd love to have you there. While you're down there, hit the like button and leave a comment if you have any thoughts on the space. Maybe some ideas. I'd love some ideas. And if you don't have any ideas, just leave your favorite emoji for engagement. Thank you for that. And as always... Happy streaming.